So my name is Simon Doherty and you have tuned in to the Animal Innovation Show. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Why don't you tell us who you are and how you're innovating and helping animals? I'm a veterinary surgeon by training and I suppose my career has gone off in a, a number of different angles. Uh, it's gone off in a number of different directions. Spent some time in, in primary practice, mainly working with farm animals, but also a little bit of work with uh, companion animals and even zoo animals at one point as well. Um, I spent some time in research and academia. Um, I now I'm based at this wonderful uh, Queen's University in Belfast here in Northern Ireland, but I've also then uh, spent quite a bit of time working in business development um, in the animal health and welfare sector. It sounds like you've been exposed and seen so many innovative things. So take us down that path. Like what kinds of things, I mean, you were talking before about vaccine delivery, I guess my simple brain is, wait, you mean the needle? <laughs> I mean, isn't that how they deliver vaccines? A lot of early vaccines were actually based on getting the bacteria or the virus um, and somehow knocking it out, you know, um, killing it in some kind of way or denaturing it is what we talk about with, with viruses. And, and they were quite crude products. You know, if you, you expose the body to a little bit of the bacteria or a little bit of the virus, um, it, the body will mount an immune response and, um, and so on. But there are a number of other things actually within vaccines that help them to work. Um, so the main ones are stabilizers. So they they maybe a lot of vaccines need to be kept um, refrigerated. You know, one of the commercial vaccines for COVID actually needs to be kept yeah. very refrigerated um, at very very low temperatures. For us working in in you know particularly in farm animals across the globe, it, we don't always have access to cold chain. We don't always have access yeah. to fridges. So one of the things that we were looking at was can we stabilize the the stuff within the, the vaccine to make it stable at room temperature, for example? Or can we, um, for poultry, where we're maybe vaccinating hundreds of birds at a time, can we actually create the vaccine in a form where we spray it? That stuff's really cool. You know, can we, can we actually, or could, for cattle, you know, we use a lot of pour on products. I mean, even for companion animals, we use a lot of spot on products now, you know, for, you know, for worms and fleas and ticks and things like that. Could we actually vaccinate by using a spot on rather than having to inject it into an animal? So the vaccine delivery system is really the kind of extra bits that are in the vaccine to help stabilize it or possibly use it through new routes of administration. So can we create an oral vaccine that we can just swallow? Can we take a, a vaccine? And, and some of the influenza vaccines, for example, are given up the nose and you just, you get a squirt up the nose and you sniff it in. The stuff that's in the vaccine that allows that to happen is the vaccine delivery system. And that's what we were we were working on. We were using a, what's called a silicon nanoparticle. It's a tiny, tiny little particle. Um, and, uh, you know, they can go through the skin and stuff like that and through mucosa. So, you know, up, you know, in through your mouth or up, up your nose and that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's exciting just to hear about some of these things that are going on. I mean, you don't, like you said, you don't think about it in your normal day-to-day -day life. So, I mean, if people want to learn more about you and the work and the cool innovations and in that you're doing, where can they go? In the States and um, the Kansas City Animal Health Investment Forum is one of the big events for the year for small companies to meet with big companies and share ideas and to meet investors and all that kind of stuff. That's in Kansas City. We've got one held here in, in, um, in the UK. Um, so the Animal Health Investment Forum, which will take place in London uh, in the new year. Um, I think it's the end of uh, February um, in, in new year. Equally, we have there's an Animal Health Investment Forum Asia, um, one in Latin America. So there's a very small number and, and a really good one in Canada as well um, uh, called Vet Health Global in Canada. But those are, those are quite expensive um, yeah. sometimes to get to, you know, for a startup company that's, you know, working on a limited budget. So again, you know, we're, uh, we, we've set up a, a global animal health network. So if you do a Google search for global animal health network, um, you'll be able to kind of learn more about what me and people like me, you know, would do in terms of that networking and making, helping to make connections. And that's just was an online forum that will help improve some of that communication but in between some of these other um, global events that are taking place. As we wrap up here, Simon, I'll just, I'll just say kind of the same thing to our viewers and listeners, right? If you've got an idea for a product, a service, anything that's helping animals, helping people, 
We want to know about it. Get you on the show. Maybe connect you up with Simon. He can point you in the right direction. So just go to innovations.show and we'd love to hear about you and have you on the show. So thank you again, Simon, for coming on. I really enjoyed the conversation. You're welcome. So did I. Thanks for the opportunity.